A very good morning to everyone. Okay, some people said good morning. That's good. <laughs> good. It's 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 wonderful to be here. Uh, uh, first of all, greetings to all the dignitaries on the dais, uh, uh, off the dais. Um, really um, delighted to see the uh, commitment uh, in this room and also on the panel uh, throughout the day uh, to, uh, made to this, this important topic. Um, um, I, I, I'd like to say that uh, while we have known about its importance for a long time, uh, let, let, let me say that um, if we don't figure this industry academia topic out, collaboration topic out, we will not be a world leader. That's it. And I think we have to go at least 10x in 10 day, 10 years. Okay, on on this. This is my. This is just uh, right, right uh, away. Uh, uh, how I feel about it uh, being at the Atal Innovation Mission. Uh, I I I, uh, I feel that we have, uh, uh, in a nutshell, you know, we we have all the components, but we don't yet have the system of integration of these two. So each of each component is doing very well actually uh, but the integration of these components uh, that uh, i think is what uh, needs a lot of work uh, and what what i what i'd like to do over the next 10 or so minutes uh, is to share uh, some thoughts with you uh, again I, I realized in reading the uh, agenda as well as looking around the room that this is a very wise audience and i anyway i don't have any silver bullets uh, so, but I, I, I'll share some thoughts uh, that uh, uh, feel to me uh, would be relevant to what uh, we're discussing here today. Uh, I think, you know, from the innovation ecosystems perspective, there are two very interesting uh, moments at which we are. First, uh, uh, we, we, we are in the process, for example, of uh, 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 proposing what the next five years of India's innovation ecosystem ought to look like. Uh, and uh, one aspect that is absolutely clear is that uh, we have spent a, a lot of time on creating the infrastructure for innovation, right? There is the tinkering labs in schools, there are the incubation centers all over the country, more than 600 of them. Uh, um, there are activities happening uh, at the, in, in the acceleration space slowly uh, and so on. Uh, but but I think uh, the next the next ten years, if I were to guess, would be about interconnections between these uh, uh, different things that are happening, right? So in other words, what I'm saying is that if you you know people talk about ecosystem, most of the times nobody defines what they mean by an ecosystem. Uh, but I, I'll just uh, uh, share with you what I think uh, I, I what what how we've been thinking about the ecosystem. So this is. Uh, it, it, from the innovation ecosystem's perspective, you know, we're trying to build something where um, the friction for an idea, friction experienced by an idea in becoming an enterprise, a startup, and then a bigger business, when that friction is lowered, we would have built the necessary ecosystem. So like they say, you know, if somebody nails it uh, in academia, can the ecosystem scale it? If when that will happen, we would have built the right ecosystem. Obviously, that ecosystem will need at least three things, right? It will need the right actors. It will need them to write, uh, uh, perform the right functions. And it will need them to interconnect uh, meaningfully. And uh, in these three, I feel that the first two are beginning to happen. But the interconnection piece, and this uh, industry academia is a giant interconnection piece, is uh, not yet happening as efficiently as it needs to happen. Um, similarly, there is the corporate uh, uh, startups interconnection piece, right? Not really happening as efficiently as we uh, want it to happen. So I think uh, we, have our work, uh, we have our work cut out. Um, um, 
let me let me share uh, again given this wise audience i i'll sort of uh, 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 abstract my points uh, at a little higher plane uh, i think we have to do three things right very simply we have to uh, uh, change how we teach in academia and not what we teach often and how we teach also right uh, uh, come to that in a second second we have to change uh, how we think about the evolution of the industry we may be in. I'll come to that. Um, and th third is, of course, uh, how we connect the two. Right. So the first uh, piece of how we teach, I think we have to, as many institutions as possible, we'll have to go to first principles thinking uh, and teaching. Right. That's not happening. OK, I'll give you a very uh, vivid example of it. I used to be a teaching assistant at MIT in a programming course. The way we teach programming, most of the places, 99% of the places teach programming as follows. They say, here is a syntax. Here are some examples. Why don't you go practice? You will learn programming, and you will then get a job. And they do. And there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but there's a different way of teaching programming. For example, when, when, when you have a class of 250 people uh, uh, programming 101 at MIT, there is a Dabba in the center, PDP-11, 1978 computer. And these people are told that, listen, there is no programming languages. There's only this Dabba. It, has, it only knows five instructions. But you are expected to, in, uh, to implement a database. Can you make your own programming language? So people make each person, each group makes their own programming language on paper. Then they say, oh, OK, well, you know, this Dabba has to understand your syntax. Why don't you implement your syntax in this uh, five instructions? So they write an interpreter using the five instructions. Then they're told, OK, but it has to compile it. Can you compile it using these five instructions? And now that your programming language is working, can you compile it? Write a compiler. So within a semester, you can see that these people who go through this rigor, they completely understand why programming languages are the way they are. And therefore, they can now open up any programming language. And they can learn it. Uh, now, why doesn't that pedagogy scale across the universe? It does not scale because it's a lot of work for teachers, right? Think about it. I mean, 250 people, each person with their own instruction, uh, programming language, you're trying to advise them. You have a group of TAs, but it's, it's a lot of work. This is just one example, but we'll have to. But when we will teach from the first principles, or the places that do teach from the first principles, they have startups coming out that have immediate applications, a very breakthrough startups, right? So that's first thing. I think teaching from first principles. Second, I think this idea of the way we think about industry, that has to change. Because, uh, uh, see, today when I go to the industry and I say, I ask a question, uh, when do you interact with startups? They say, well, uh, when I can see a clear uh, connection with my top line or a bottom line, I interact with a startup. In other words, I go to a customer and I tell them that by going with this startup, I can offer you a better product. That's a top line argument, right? Uh, I, I go with this startup. Or when I know that in order to deliver my product or service, I have to perform a certain f a set of functions, and this startup will perform that function better than me at a lower cost, I will interact with this startup, right? There's nothing wrong with this argument. I mean, it, it's their money. So uh, I understand it completely. I, I have no problem with it. But uh, the, the, there is one major assumption underneath this uh, argument. The major assumption is, uh, that the total pie is constant, and I want a bigger slice of that pie. OK? Now, there, there's nothing wrong with that argument either in many industries. But in many other industries, the pie is disappearing. Then I think the startup is your way. Because you can't take the innovative risk that a startup can take, not because you don't understand it or don't want to take it, but because your structure and the expectations of your customers don't allow you to take that risk, that startup has taken that risk. 
today, startup in industry, I like to say metaphorically, are two soda water glasses standing side by side. In each glass, you can be a bubble at the bottom and be, go to the top and become a unicorn or a global product. But we need osmosis in these two glasses, right? That, if we don't do, we will not be a global leader. As simple as that. Third, uh, how do we interconnect this? So how does the osmosis happen, right? So I, I saw that many uh, panels today uh, are about that. So I will not really belabor that point uh, uh, too much. But I, I will say that, again, we have all the components. We have all the examples. We were just, uh, 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 Professor Shoik uh, was uh, mentioning about a recent example in Kolkata, uh, Jyoti Institute. For instance, when Atul Innovation Mission gave Jyoti Institute in Bangalore an Atul Incubation Center, we were criticized heavily that this is a private institution and has uh, no particular, uh, uh, I mean, why are you giving them as opposed to these people or whatever. This institution, for whatever reasons, had 40 years of, 25 years of history of having 400 postdoctoral researchers, or roughly uh, industrial researchers. It's a private engineering college. Today, it's one of the most successful incubators because they have the research base, right? We have that model. Similarly, uh, there, are, there are other models. Um, but, but the one, I, I will just tell you about the two things that we do plan to do in the next year so uh, we can all partner. Uh, first, um, last year we had uh, experimented with a model uh, called in Indovation. It, it was that, that was just one example. But Pfizer came up and they said that they want to do acceleration of startups that are in health space. And we said, can you pick two areas? And they picked two, they picked in, uh, 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 oncology and uh, digital health. Um, and uh, four actors came together, Pfizer uh, to, to sort of uh, uh, nurture and scale startups and invest in them. They invested 65 lakh per startup in 20 startups for three years consecutively. Um, Pfizer, Social Alpha, that was the implementation partner. Artel Innovation Mission was the uh, ecosystem partner to create the funnel. And IIT Delhi was a research partner. If any startup needed lab space and needed to do research, uh, it's been doing very well. We're trying to do 20, we're, we're proposing to do. We haven't been given the permission, but we're trying to do many such niche industry accelerate, academia accelerators because I, I, we see that in many areas, our ecosystem is ready to do that. Uh, okay, uh, so sort of industry money begins to flow into translational work. So that's one. The second is uh, last year we also ran, and Satya is here. Uh, uh, we we also ran AIM Prime. Uh, it was a nine-month uh, deep tech acceleration program, uh, where we scouted across the country uh, for the science-based uh, startups who were at about TRL uh, technology readiness level. Uh, four or five, and we accelerated them intensely through nine a nine-month program. First three months was instructions, and next six months was intense hand-holding. Um, many of these startups did very well. Within those nine months, they raised a total of 20 crore rupees, about there were 12 international awards, uh, all of that. But the most important thing that we learned was that uh, we couldn't have done it in any single institution because our deep tech uh, ecosystem still, uh, there's a lot of deep tech seeds everywhere, uh, but uh, not in any single place possibly. So this uh, uh, helped us to bring it together. Uh, the second thing we learned was that you will, we will not do deep tech successfully. Uh, by the way, I should say what I mean by deep tech because that word also gets thrown around uh, without any definition. Uh, what I mean by deep tech is that uh, deep tech are those startups where the process of creating startup itself leads to new knowledge. That to me is deep tech, okay? Uh, we, we realize that we will not be able to do deep tech without intense, a mechanism for intense handholding and an appetite for investment in such ideas and so on. But there are models for it. Uh, so I think we should bring these models together. I'm once again, uh, really, really delighted that this conversation is happening here. 
is going to happen going forward. I said we have to do it 10x in 10 years. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, all of what we can do from Atal Innovation Mission Niti Aayog is yours. Thank you very much.